The third 6th anniversary special for Doctor Who is nearly here. The grand finale, with returning friends, returning foes, and a whole host of other elements at play. It looks set to be an epic story, an epic finale, and so without further ado, here are 10 reasons to be excited for The Giggle. So first of all, we have David Tennant, the 14th Doctor, who I have mentioned in some capacity every week after one of these videos, but this week, you know, it is his swan song, his regeneration story, the end of the road for the 14th Doctor. Now, do I think this will be David Tennant's last ever appearance in Doctor Who in any form whatsoever? No, I'm sure he'll return one day for the 75th anniversary or the 100th or whatever it may be, but certainly for the time being, this is it. This is the grand finale for David, for the 14th Doctor, so I'm sure there are going to be lots of great David Tennant and 14th Doctor moments in this. Great speeches, great showdowns with the toy maker, lots of stuff, lots of emotional stuff as well for David to get his teeth into and to really show us just why he's such a popular Doctor. Likewise, this is the final story, for the time being, for Catherine Tate and for Donna Noble. Now again, you know, would I put it past her to return at some point in the future? No, and I think especially now that she's got her memories back, you know, she's in a better place now and it's easier to bring her back in the future should Russell or other writers want to bring Donna back into play and her family and all that sort of stuff. You know, she's a great character, a fan favorite companion, so it's entirely possible that she will return again one day but to all intents and purposes, this is also it for Donna, not just for the 14th Doctor, but for Donna as well. So two big farewells in this story. It's going to be an emotional one. I'm sure the characters will both get put through the ringer. And yeah, it'll just be really interesting to see how things are left off with both of them. And how with Donna, you know, how things are left with her. Will she get a happier ending than she had in Journey's End? I certainly hope so, but it remains to be seen. And number three, we have the villain of the piece, the Toymaker, who of course originally appeared alongside William Hartnell's first Doctor and hasn't been seen on screen in nearly 60 years. So this showdown between him and the 40th Doctor has been a long time coming and we don't know how far his influence extends, whether he had a hand in the regeneration from the 13th Doctor to the 14th, whether he's behind in this whole thing with the Doctor's old face coming back and possibly in you know, a destiny with Donna as well, controlling events from afar. He's this all-powerful being, this godlike being who seems completely on Unstoppable and has this, this massive plan at play here involving a mysterious giggle and driving the human race against themselves, you know, driving them mad. So that's going to be really great to see and, and a real treat, I think, for long term fans and for classic series fans to see this old character, this old villain back from you know, the original Doctor, the first Doctor's era, a real callback to properly celebrate 60 years of the show and a fantastic idea for a villain in his own right. The original Toymaker serial, the Celestia Toymaker, first of all doesn't exist in its entirety, only part four is still available to watch, it only exists in the archives, all the other three parts were junk, so you can only listen to them. And it's a story as well that people aren't necessarily that fond of. They're fond of the character and the idea and the concepts, but I think there's certainly a feeling that there's a lot of untapped potential with the toy maker. And with Russell writing him here and Neil Patrick Harris playing him, you know, we're sure for a crazy ride with this, this new version of the character. I cannot wait to see all the chaos that he unleashes. It's gonna be completely bonkers, but completely brilliant. At number four, we have the return of Kate Stewart, the head of units, the Brigadier's daughter, a sort of regular character in the revived series now. I believe she's appeared alongside as many Doctors as her father did in the classic series. And now she'll be coming face to face with the 14th Doctor and hopefully assisting him to defeat the Toymaker or try and defeat the Toymaker. And also as well, heading up this new iteration of Unit. You know, when we last saw Kate in The Power of the Doctor just a couple of stories ago, well, first of all, you know, Unit had only just recently been resurrected and revived after it was shut down by the Grand Serpent, but also as well they had a swanky new headquarters in that story and it was almost immediately blown up, it was gone just like that. But now Unit is back, you know, with the new headquarters, it's here, bigger and better, and here to stay. You know, Kate is once again front and centre. And I think it's going to be really nice and really rewarding to see her back with this new team of characters, you know, with the unit that, that she always deserved and that the show always deserved as well, you know, properly doing justice to the character and to the legacy of Unit and the Brigadier. At number five, we have another returning character who hasn't officially been announced, 
But look, this is hardly a spoiler. We all know, all the fans know, that Mel Bush will be returning in this story, not just in next year's season alongside Shooty Gatwa's Doctor, but also in this year's specials alongside Davis Helen's 14th. Mel's involvement in the specials, I think, has been rumoured as far back as that filming in Bristol in, I think, June of last year, when the Doctor and Donna were down an alleyway with the TARDIS, and someone overheard them talking about Mel. I, th I think Donna says something like, oh, Mel, she's brilliant, isn't she? And the Doctor goes, oh, yeah, she is. And you know, they've clearly just, like, come from, you know, quarters or something, that they've clearly just interacted with Mel Bush. We couldn't be sure at the time that it was the same Mel, but then the rumours piled up and other stuff came out, like that photo of Mel on the you know, helipad and all that kind of stuff. And then that Disney Plus trailer where she's visible in the background of one of the shots. And then I think just to troll us this week as well, one of the officially released promo pics has also got Mel in the background, you know, all bit blurred so you can't see her face. But, you know, come on, it's the same costume we've seen. It's a ginger person alongside Donna. Yeah, it's Mel. She's back. For some reason, they, they haven't announced it, but I suppose it will be a nice surprise for anyone that doesn't know, that genuinely doesn't know that she is back. Boy Langford is a fantastic actress and performer in her own right, and beyond Doctor Who, with all the theatre stuff she's done, the musicals and all her other acting bits and pieces over the years. And, you know, as well with Mel, she's not the most loved companion, but she absolutely deserves to be. And I think this is the beginning of a renaissance for the character, you know, having her back, putting her computer skills to use for once as well, presumably, as part of this new unit lineup. I think it's going to be a real treat to see her back in the show, and I, for one, cannot wait. Speaking of returning characters and actors, we have some other cast members that will be familiar to both recent viewers and long-term viewers as well. And once again, none of these are spoilers, but some of them haven't been talked about as much as others. So I think first of all, you know, we've got our new unit regular character introduced in The Star Beast, Shirley Ann Bingham, played by Ruth Maidley. It's going to be great to see her again, you know, alongside Kate and at home in the United quarters, alongside all of our other new regular team members. We're also going to have the Nobles back in some capacity, you know, so Sylvia and Sean and Rose. I suppose it might just be for a brief scene at the end or something, you know, it's not entirely clear. With so much other stuff to fit into this story, it's kind of hard to see how they would play a more significant role, but maybe they will, and it'll be nice to see them again and hopefully kind of round things off with them and leave them all happy and stuff like that. And then last but certainly not least, as revealed on the Reddit Times cast list for this story, we have the return of Trinity Wells, the news presenter from the original Russell T. Davis era. I think she appeared first of all in Aliens of London, and then other stories as well, like the Christmas Invasion, Sound of Drums. Uh, basically, whenever there was a big sort of global alien invasion, it's not something that was like, domestic or local to London or the UK, but something that actually impacted the US as well. Now, Trinity Wells is is a bit of a meme. Um, she's not someone that the general public or casual fans are necessarily going to recognise or anything like that, but she's nevertheless a link to the past and to Russell's first era. It's going to be really, really nice to see her again. I'm sure it should be like a brief cameo or something, but yeah, hopefully the first of many appearances from Trinity Wells in this new Russell era. For number seven, let's turn our attention back to units and all the new unit elements we're going to be getting in this story. In addition to all these returning regulars and sort of new old regulars with Mal and stuff like that. So we have, first of all, a brand new team member who hasn't appeared before, but looks set to become part of the furniture and part of this new lineup. That is Colonel Ibrahim, I believe he's called, a new character he'll be appearing in next year's season and by the look of things beyond that as well. So a proper sort of lineup of unit characters, you know, him, Shirley, Mel, Kate, a really strong sort of quartet there and maybe other people as well. But you know, it's really nice to have like unit family again, sort of harking back to the original days of unit in the third Doctor's era. We had you know Benson and Yates and the Brigadier, of course. We also have the new unit headquarters making its proper debut in this story. It was briefly glimpsed at the end of the Star Beast, but here we're going to be properly introduced to this new unit headquarters, this new building, this swanky new building in the heart of London's financial district. You know, it's there making a big statement. You can't miss it. It's there front and center. This massive sort of skyscraper with, of course, the now infamous unit helipad, originally glimpsed by eagle-eyed fans on Google Maps in the Bad Wolf Studios backlot. And, of course, the interior set for the new headquarters as well, with all those desks and all those screens and stuff. You know, the scale of this is unmatched by any previous iteration of units. I think it's everything that fans could have ever hoped for, and I just really can't wait to see it on screen. 
At number eight, we have the historical elements of this story. So we are going to be harking back and going back to the 1920s, the early days of television, the significant pioneer from that time, John Logie Baird, who basically conducted the very first tests for television broadcasts, and I believe the very first television broadcasts full stop as well. Here's the one who had this puppet, Stooky Bill, that was used in these tests, and this puppet is presumably going to be hijacked in some way by the toy maker as part of his plan. So that's going to be really nice to see. I think as well to have a celebrity historical element to the 60th specials as well. You know, we briefly got Isaac Newton last week, but compared to this, you know, hopefully this is going to be a much more substantial thing and play into the story a lot more. You know, Doctor Who was designed as an educational show to teach viewers at home and children about history. And so I think above all, I'm just really hoping to learn something from this and for it to be a proper celebration, not just of Doctor Who as a show, but television as a whole, really. Now we get onto the juicy stuff, so the, the sort of final sort of parts of this story. The actual generation and the transition from the 14th Doctor into the 15th. So dealing first with the 14th Doctor, with his final lines and his regeneration and the cause of his regeneration as well. You know, what is it going to be that brings about the end of this incarnation? You know, it's heavily rumoured and implied to be something to do with the toy maker. I really can't wait to see how that all plays out. You know, will it be something to do with units Galvin? Vanic Beam, that, that massive cannon on the helipad, will the toy maker use that to sort of finish the Doctor off? And just how will the transition play out as well? Because there have been some rumours, there have been some leaks, some interesting sort of things sort of that suggest this is not going to be a straightforward regeneration or straightforward transition from one Doctor to the next. I won't say any more on that, you know, I'm not talking about the leaks in videos until after the episode has gone out. But I certainly think it's going to be an interesting one and, and probably a controversial one as well. I think Russell has recently teased in the Doctor Who Magazine episode preview that there are some big sort of changes to Doctor Who lore and Doctor Who mythology coming, you know, going forward. And this will be the moment where all that kind of stuff comes into play. So, yes, I won't say any more there, but interesting times ahead, I think. And finally, at number 10, we have our new Doctor, Mr. Shooty Gatwa, the 15th Doctor, making his debut in this story. Now, before the specials came out, you know, we thought perhaps he might be appearing earlier than this, in Special 1 or Special 2. Now we know that that wasn't the case, he will be making his debut in The Giggle. But I don't think, you know, again, it'll be a very straightforward thing where he just kind of pops up for the final scene or something, in the final five minutes. I think that he'll be appearing a lot earlier than that and playing quite a pivotal role in the story, perhaps. You know, maybe we will somehow have some multi-Doctor shenanigans going on here where he gets to appear alongside David Tennant as well in some capacity. But, you know, whatever happens, however that goes, I think it's going to be really, really exciting to finally see Shooty make his Doctor Who debut because there's so much about his Doctor that, that we still don't know yet. We've had the briefest of glimpses and the photographs and stuff, but yeah, we really don't know how he's going to be playing the parts, how it's going to be on screen seeing him. I think it's going to be really, really exciting. Now, there's been this massive build-up to his debut as the Doctor. We've known he's going to be taking on the part for over a year and his film stuff, you know, over a year ago as well. So they've been sitting on this stuff for a very, very long time. Time. I think it's going to be really, really nice to, to finally see what they've been cooking up and what Shooty is like in the part. What are your hopes and predictions for The Giggle, for this grand finale, the swan song for the 14th Doctor? I would love to hear it down in the comments below, so please do let me know. If you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new for more stuff like this in the future. But otherwise, until the next one, thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now.